The Saudi public prosecutor blamed a, quote, quarrel and brawl that, quote, resulted in Khashoggi's death. The president said that he finds that explanation credible. Do you? No, they've, uh, they've lost all credibility as it relates to explaining what has happened. And uh, I do hope over uh, the next few days we'll actually have the tapes that the Turks have. I know we haven't received them yet, but uh, I don't think anybody believes that story. I can understand the president wanting to keep open channels, uh, but I think those of us who, who want to speak directly to this know that it's just not credible. Well, the president said it was credible. He's not just keeping open channels. He's lending his authority to their official yeah. explanation. Yeah. Well, again, uh, Jake, it, it, you know, everybody can say what they wish, but it's just not a credible story for somebody to walk in with 15 other people and get into a fist fight and lose their life. So I do hope, look, we're going to have a thorough investigation. I know that our agencies will be looking into it. Um, we've uh, invoked the Magnitsky Act, which says within 120 days of when we did it a week ago, an in full investigation has to take place and sanctions have to be, or sa sanctions should be placed, put in place for anybody who's had anything to do with it. It's my sense, and I don't know yet, but based on the intel that I've read, based on the other excerpts that I've read, it's my thinking that MBS was involved in this, that he directed this, and that this person was pur purposely murdered. But we'll have a chance to see that uh, hopefully very soon. And my sense is, Jake, even over the next week, it's going to become much clearer. You said earlier this week that the White House had, quote, clamped down on sharing intelligence about Khashoggi's death with congressional leaders such as yourself, the chairman yeah. of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Uh, the White House says that's not true, and they yeah. refer referred reporters to you to clarify. So would you clarify? Are you getting the access you need to do your job? Yeah, I was supposed to have a CIA briefing on Tuesday. I was in Washington uh, dealing with some other issues, and it was called off. And there is some question as to why that was the case. The White House has called us directly and vehemently denied that they called it off. It could have been some committee interworkings. It could have been just some confusion. Uh, we ended up having additional briefings on Friday. One of our key staffers is going to have a briefing on Tuesday, a full briefing. So the intelligence faucet is turned back on, and there likely was just a miscommunication that took place. But obviously, I was there to, to receive it, and uh, it didn't take place. But, but again, we are getting the intelligence that we need now, and hopefully uh, the United States will actually get those Turkish tapes. I mean, the Turks have been talking more to the media then they have us as it relates to our intelligence agencies, but obviously those would be very, very useful to us to be able to listen ourselves to what occurred. Is it your understanding that the CIA has heard the tape that you're referring to or not? <clears throat> you know, I had a conversation yesterday with Secretary Pompeo about a wide ranging number of issues and to his knowledge at two o'clock yesterday they had not received those tapes so sometimes the CIA gets things obviously you know he used to run the agency sometimes they get things and it takes a couple of days for them to to go through them and make sure that they're valid but as of yesterday at two I don't think we had received those and it'd be very helpful if they would go ahead and forward them if they have them uh, obviously for us to make our own discernment you said that you believe that MBS, the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, was behind the murder of Khashoggi. During an interview with the Washington Post yesterday, President Trump praised the Crown Prince, praised his leadership. He called him a strong person. He added, quote, he has very good control. Yeah. He loves his country. Just to be clear, you don't have any yeah. doubt that the Crown Prince is behind this? Well, look, again, Jake, my sense is that he is behind it. Um, you know, I want to see the rest of uh, the documentation. I want to see, I want to know more about it. But that's my sense. I'm not, I'm not condemning automatically today. I want, to, I want this investigation to be completed. But yes, look, if you sit down with him, and I'm sure you have, Jake, he is a very impressive young person talking about the future of Saudi Arabia, uh, pushing back against the Wahhabists there by doing some of the progressive things that they obviously rail against. Uh, you know, moving away from solely focusing on fossil fuels to 
privatizing Aramco, which hasn't occurred yet, but if you, if you listen to his vision of the future, it is very impressive. But then if you look what he did when he came into power where he got the opposition in the Ritz-Carlton, uh, detained them there, tortured many of them. When you look at the fact that uh, Lebanon has a confessional system and so their, their prime minister, a Sunni, uh, the fact that he didn't like the way he was carrying out uh, his activities, he arrested him. Obviously, Arari has construction interest in Saudi Arabia, and I think his wife lives there, so they had a lot of, they, la they had a hold over him, if you will. And then if you look at the rookie mistake he made uh, in Qatar, where without even talking to us, uh, they put in place this blockade. He also has made some mistakes, and obviously if he's gone forth and murdered uh, this journalist, um, he's now crossed the line, and there has to be a punishment and a price paid for that. And, and again, I'm not rushing to judgment. Do I think he did it? Yes, I think he did it. Uh, let's, uh, let's finish this investigation. We have the best in the world at being able to do that. We obviously have intercepts from the past uh, that point to involvement at a very high level. So let's let this play out. But my guess is at the end of the day, uh, the United States and the rest of the world will believe fully that he did it. We'll see. By the way, uh, I've heard from if other he ambassadors it, Jake, in other countries. Well, I, I'm moving to that. If he did it, then I think there, there should be a collective response. I've talked to ambassadors from other countries uh, in the West. Um, they're looking for the United States uh, for leadership on this issue. But they also want to make sure that they coordinate a response with us. They, too, have arms sales uh, to Saudi Arabia. They, too, have interests there, just like we do. And so uh, this is something where I think you're going to see the mm -hmm. United States, United Kingdom, France, Germany working collectively with others, if he did this, to respond in an appropriate way. If he did this, sir, do you think President Trump is helping him cover it up? I don't. Look, I, look, I understand the tremendous equities that they have involved here. Um, and I see the president uh, evolving on this issue uh, in a positive way. Um, look, they've spent a lot of time in Riyadh. Uh, as you know, Jared Kushner has put together a Middle East plan. He came over the other day and gave us some of the high-level concepts they're working on. But they've got, a, they've got a lot of stock here. And the fact is that you saw on Saturday uh, the king who, let's face it, is not, uh, is not particularly coherent. I'm just being honest. You've got a crown prince who's consolidated his authority, authority. He was given additional authority on Saturday, as I understand it, just to show that they are fully behind mm -hmm. him. And so when you look at the country, I mean, this is the person, it looks like, that may be there for the next 30, 40, 50 years. And so I think as we look at this, and I've talked to other senators about this, we have to, we want to look at the individual, and we want to make sure that if this individual has been involved and directed this brutal killing of a journalist, then we have to punish that person. Mm -hmm. We also need to think about the fact that Saudi Arabia is a country uh, that is a fairly important country. And so we've got to figure out a way to have a nuanced response uh, to this situation. But again, if he directed it, um, we need to put the same types of sanctions in place that we've done with other people who've done the same thing. And we could look to Russia uh, to see the types of sanctions that have been put in place there. Sanctions are a blunt yeah. instrument. Okay, they're not, they're not that great. They're good, but they're not that great. And so we need to think of other ways to deal with this kind of behavior. What we don't want is a ruler that's going to be around for 40 or 50 years going around the world continuing to conduct operations like this. And so collectively, we've got to deal with this in an appropriate way.